Hello there, my name is Kyle Chapman, and this is the first in the video series about getting started in Intro to Programming, which I hope you're going to watch at the beginning of the COSC 1100 course. Our very first video in this series is specifically about learning using online videos, the concept of using videos like this as a learning tool. Now we do use videos for a lot of this course and the general philosophy and some professors will do slightly different things and that's okay but the general idea is that we want the part where someone's talking and defining things and some of the examples being shown we want that to be the part that's being done remotely so that during actual class meetings we can answer your questions and show you live examples and ask for your input so we're trying to put the boring part online so that anything we do together which might also be online is going to be productive time. Because of this, we do a lot of video lecture, and that might seem dry at times, but the intent is there, and it works really well when you come to class and you've watched the videos and you're ready to participate. So please consider these online videos, including this series that you're starting to watch right now, consider this to be the lecture part of this course. These videos are meant to directly inform the work you're assigned. The video content also carries over to future courses in the program. That's for everyone, but especially for programmers. And sometimes we will use other things, we'll use other videos, we'll link some external articles, but consider this the real stuff. It's all real, even I'm real. As I said, my name is Kyle Chapman, and I may not be your professor for this course, since all of the intro to programming professors might use these videos, but I am a real professor for this course, and especially for those of you in programming, we'll probably get to know each other eventually. In a way, these videos are also a great way for us to get to know each other. Whether I'm your professor right now or not, you're welcome to come and visit my office or chat with me on the IT Society Discord or whatever. I don't necessarily have all of the answers, but I'm very happy to discuss programming and our courses. Anyway, there are a lot of reasons why we rely on these videos. Video lectures are available if you miss class. They're available when you feel that you work and you learn best and they're available to you when you're done our course, if you wanna go back to them. You can also pause this video whenever you want. Sometimes in the videos we've made for this course, we are even gonna ask you to pause just to think about what's happened in the video. You can watch the video faster if you're finding it a bit too dry or maybe it's review for you, or you might choose to watch it slower if you need more time to digest the concepts. This also means you could watch it several times in a row if you want. You're also very welcome to use closed captions these should be available to you, and uh, those sometimes help people understand things that are happening in the video, and that's something that is harder to do in a live lecture. So these are all legitimate benefits of using online video instead of uh, a traditional lecture. But there are some drawbacks. There are a lot of people who don't like this, and we're understanding of that, but there are so many benefits that we tend to overlook these. But let's not overlook these, let's address them. So there is less direct contact with the person lecturing, and it's really easy, I think, for your courses in this program to seem impersonal when you're digesting so much video content. Especially since you may or may not be in my class, you might have another professor entirely. It can also be very easy to be distracted. If your life is anything like mine, you could end up with kids wandering into the room, or perhaps the next recommended video that pops up on YouTube could be something that's not very educational at all. There could be a number of things. It could be family things, it could be personal things, so many things. Being in a classroom environment can give you a lot of focus that an online video doesn't provide. It also makes your interactions with your colleagues perhaps seem a little bit more impersonal. When you get to know a team and learn with a team, that can really be an asset. So we're still going to try to build those relationships during the times that we actually spend together, even if we're together remotely. But we do understand that there might be some perceived reduced interaction with colleagues. Let's recognize though that when we're actually solving problems together during our uh, in-class sessions, that's more interactive than a traditional lecture. You can work directly with people rather than just listening to a lecture at the same time as them. So we want to do what we can to maximize the benefits and minimize the drawbacks. A really good way to do this, especially if you're finding that these videos are not working for you, is do your very best to treat the video lecture completely like an actual lecture. And this can be hard, it is an adjustment. One thing you might consider doing is to allocate a very specific time to watch these videos. Block some time and tell your family, I'm dedicating these two hours per week to this course. And just use that time to watch videos or do exercises or read the book or whatever. Two hours might not be enough or it might be too much depending on your own habits. 
a good way to be prepared for the things that we're going to do together when we actually have class meetings, whether those are remote or in-person meetings, is to watch the videos before class time so that you'll know all of the concepts that are being talked about and you'll be ready for the class activities. If you haven't watched necessary videos before those class activities, you're not going to be prepared and you're not going to learn as much and it'll feel like a big waste of time. And this might sound like I'm passing the buck. It's not meant to be that way, but it is not your professor's fault if you come to class unprepared and then you feel like you've wasted your time. You need to take the responsibility for your learning and a good way to do that is do your very best to watch the videos before the class where we use the video content. Another very good idea for making use of online videos is to take notes as if it was an actual class. And this sometimes sounds ridiculous in the IT sector, but if you're actually taking notes, if you want to take some electronic notes, then you can pause the video. You could perhaps watch the video on a second monitor if that is an option for you. You can even collaborate and take notes on a shared document that you use with your colleagues. You can also go old school. Some people really find that handwritten notes helps them to memorize things more easily. You can keep a physical notebook and take notes on each video, title them with the video's title, and there you go, it's easy to revisit your notes. Another really good thing about in-person lectures is being able to ask direct questions when you need to. And not everyone does this, but for the people that do, this is important. The good news is that you can still do that, and you really should. You're going to feel engaged with your professor if you ask lots of questions. If you have a few good questions after watching the video, maybe some things aren't very clear to you, then you can message us on MS Teams or Zoom or whatever tool we're using for communication, or you can just email us, and hopefully we'll be able to give you a good answer. Using MS Teams is also a very good way to interact more with your colleagues, as we discussed, because your colleagues might be able to answer that question, and it's very likely that somebody is going to see it before the professor. And when you do that, you've established a, a relationship with someone who's going to be perhaps a valuable learning resource for you. You might not think of them as a learning resource. Perhaps you'll think of them as a friend. Either way, that's wonderful news. So just to reiterate, we really want you to watch the online videos. We know it can be hard for people. But let's also recognize that in addition to the drawbacks, there are big benefits and there are things we can do. We can use those benefits to minimize those drawbacks. And the review question for you right now, my slides do have these checkpoints in them, by the way. So give this some thought, come up with at least one thing you can do to make sure that these online videos are going to work for you. And I'll see you in the next video.